go yeah. from there. So, yep. All right, good afternoon to all of you that are tuning in right now for our this week's Facebook Live. We're so glad you, you were able to join. We have a very special uh, edition this week, so to speak. As you can see, our backdrop is even different than what we've had the past number of weeks. We are still in the Moved series. In fact, we had part four of Moved just this past Sunday, but we were highlighting Compassion International. And so that's why you see this banner here behind, behind us. And uh, I'm Jim Washak, Communications Director here at Weston Assembly of God. For those that you do not know, and you notice this is not Shane mm -hmm. sitting to my left today, but rather this is his better half, his wife, <laughs> Sue Slushman, yeah. uh, which for those of you that are, have been going here to, to WEAG, uh, you certainly know Sue and the rest of the family well. And you also know that Sue uh, actually did the introduction for this past week's special guest speaker on Sunday. And that was really awesome, Sue. I think oh, I told you, you that. Um, that was fun. Yeah, and, and some of our, our online stream viewers were saying they had to go run and grab tissue boxes from <laughs> during your welcome. So it was, it was very moving, speaking oh, of being moved. That's so great. It lived up to that. Mm -hmm. But um, we thought we'd give Shane the, the week off and um, hear from somebody who really knows this organization inside and out. Uh, on it. <laughs> and that is Sue here. And we have a lot of questions. So for those of you that are watching live, I hope you have it in your schedule that you'll be able to stick with us a few minutes longer than normal because uh, we do have a number of great questions that we're going to want to get through. And we also want to get your questions in. So if you're watching live right now and you have a question uh, from this past Sunday sermon or, or if a question comes to mind while we're chatting today, please use the comments area and go ahead and ask your question. Because uh, no better opportunity than to uh, post that question live so that Sue can answer in real time in the moment. But if by chance you're watching this uh, Facebook Live at a later point in time where it's not live but now it's on demand, you can still use the comments here to go ahead and ask a question. We will be sure to pass that along to Sue for her to answer at her convenience. <laughs> so, um, Sue, I think it was... You know, it was important for you or advantageous for you to go ahead and make the introduction to our special guest speaker this past Sunday because your family has been sponsoring children and been a part of Compassion International for quite a number of years, right? Yes. Yeah. Could you fill viewers sure. in a little bit on your history, how you learned of Compassion and why it was important for you all to get in, involved in it? And we'll get to some questions later about how it's impacted yeah. your family too. Sure, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, so Compassion International has been around for 56 years, and I've only been a part of it for 17 years. But uh, I was at a big convention where they had a table and had a lot of uh, children's cards out to be sponsored. And I was so moved by the fact that these children were sitting there un with their needs unmet. You know, they, they weren't going to eat healthy food. They weren't going to drink water that wasn't contaminated. They weren't mm -hmm. going to go to school. Um, they um, were in danger of sexual assault and child labor and, you know, childhood marriage and all of these things. And I was just overwhelmed yeah. with the need and that for just a, a low amount of money, back then it was a dollar a day. Now it's a dollar twenty-five-ish a yeah. day, um, that I could change somebody's destiny by just coming up with $30 a month. Now mm -hmm. it's $38 a month. Um, and so I took a card and I picked a child who was about the same, who was the same, almost exactly the same age as one of our children. And so we have sponsored him for 17 years, and now we have other children that we have also sponsored. But it, um, it radically changed us. Yeah. It radically changed me as being the primary letter writer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, to invest in somebody personally rather than just giving to poverty and world needs in general, which right. we do. But... It, there's a little bit of distance that happens with that because you don't know who's getting the well and you yeah. don't know who's being saved from um, trafficking or you know what I mean it's it's all super crucial and important but it lacks a little bit of the personal touch because you don't know a person per se that's in that problem right and then you guys expanded from one child to three four soon soon after so now four yeah so okay. I have four we well it'll be five altogether because our oldest one the first one has aged out okay and, um, yeah, I, it's, <laughs> it's starting to become a little bit of an obsession, uh -huh, uh -huh. but we just, it's um, a good thing to be obsessed yeah, about. I got to say, fourth yes. one Sunday, yeah. um, nice. and anybody can, uh, if you want to sponsor a child with compassion, I'm sure you're going to go over how to do that, but yes. you can let us know or go on the website. Yeah. Compassion.com. Mm -hmm. Easy way to do it. Yeah. Um, and I think they, 
I, I believe uh, maybe the, the their homepage might be dynamic where it changes sometimes, but a couple times I went there. Uh, when you go there on the homepage, it, it allows you to find a child by birth date. And so I think mm -hmm. that's a very common thing for mm -hmm. people to do is mm -hmm. I've got a child that, that's such and such old. I would love to have another child right. about that same age or same birth date or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think all five of ours um, have had a, a same birthday month as somebody in the family. Okay. And a few of them have, uh, well, Brady, our youngest son, picked a child and they have the exact same birthday. Yeah. So we've had some that are similar ages, some that have similar birthdays, and I don't know. It just it's a way to connect with somebody that you don't know yet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I imagine it's also been um, when you're thinking of your own child's birthday coming up, it probably mm -hmm. helps you to think a little bit more theoretically of, it should, of the, it should <laughs> of the child you're sponsoring too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, very good. Uh, we have a we have a question already, Nikki. Is that correct? We do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. She would like to know, curious to know, what countries are your compassion children from? Okay. Mine personally, we've had um, two from Ethiopia, two from the Dominican Republic, and one from Togo. Okay. T Togo? West Africa. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard of Togo. Yeah. All right. It's, it's on the, the part of the ice cream cone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Opposite of the horn. I don't know. Yeah. The, the west coast of, it's the, on the, west coast. of the continent of Africa. Yeah, it's as the old us. slave trade region of Africa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a funny moment in this past Sunday's message when Kennedy, who was the guest speaker, was emphasizing that Africa is a continent. Yeah. How he gets asked if he knows if somebody. If he knows there. somebody in Africa, yeah. yeah. Um, but, that was a great moment. If you missed the sermon, oh, it's available on YouTube. It's on our website. Go ahead and watch it. That was a, a, a yeah. really funny moment. And Kennedy was great. Well, for sure. Watch Kennedy. He was yeah. the game changer, in my opinion, Sunday. He was so good. Yeah. And so Kennedy Kretzi came to be our guest speaker. And Compassion employs um, Compassion children who have, have finished the program mm -hmm. and um, become successful adults and are believers, obviously. And... He is one of their speakers that you can, he's on their website, you can book him. He speaks twice a month, mm -hmm. flies all over the country, and um, he has a phenomenal story of growing up in Nairobi in one of the worst slums in the world where nobody makes it out alive, much less break out of poverty. Yeah. And he became an engineer and a gospel hip-hop artist, <laughs> which is hysterical to me and he joined awesome. he's in the american military and uh -huh. he lives in america and has a wife and kids and just um, and now they sponsor children and too they, right and he yeah. sponsors a child from yeah. the ghetto where he grew up it's he, he's awesome. just phenomenal yeah yeah uh and we're going to talk a little bit later about just how how much of an impact compassion really does have in the lives of the children when uh, a sponsor is able to help not only a child but a family and a community and uh, the way we're going to approach our questions today is, for those of you that are regular viewers, you know that at Western Assembly of God, uh, we consider it very important for each and every person to be able to grow in, in their relationship with Christ through a four-step process that we've been calling Growth Track, uh, which is to know God, find family, discover purpose, and make a difference. And so, therefore, we kind of felt that if we're going to be talking about how we're going to sponsor another fellow human being, even if they're half a world apart, and growing closer to Christ, then perhaps we should look at how their life has changed through a very similar four-step mm -hmm. process. Uh, and so again, I've, we've got some questions for Sue that are related to growth track and the lives of these children, but we welcome your questions as well. Please use the comments here to go ahead and, and uh, submit those. And Sue, what I'm gonna start with is, first of all, it's an amazing thing, as you mentioned, that it's only $38 a month to have the type of impact that you're talking about when it was $30 a month 20, 20 years prior, right? Like, right. I, I, I know inflation for the rest of us has gone way beyond. Eight yeah, bucks. I mean, thirty. If, if we think what thirty-eight dollars a month, uh, people are a little bit freaked out about thinking I'm going to do this for how many years? Yeah. But we spend thirty-eight dollars a month on. I mean, what is it? That's a manicure. It's a pair of shoes. It's yeah. not even a bag of groceries. Um, the average millennial spends twenty-five bucks a week on Starbucks. Uh huh. That's a hundred dollars wow. a month. Wow. That's three kids almost. Yeah. yeah. And we we. We just have so much um, extra income, extra expenditures that we don't even think about. And because we could never live on a dollar ninety a day, mm -hmm. um, or three dollars a day, or five dollars a day, or whatever we're trying to get people to, we can't imagine that somebody else could do that. Yeah, I actually broke that down a little bit more. So that that thirty-eight dollars a month, when you break that down to per hour, mm -hmm. if you look at twenty-four hours, it's only a nickel. 
Wow. It's actually only five cents for every day for every hour of a day wow. uh, is all it costs to change somebody's life wow. and change a family and a community, which we're going to get more into. Yeah. And if you want to think, well, I don't make money all all day long. I have to sleep some and so forth. Okay. So if you got an eight-hour workday, typical eight-hour workday, fifteen cents an hour. That's it. So uh, it it doesn't cost a whole lot to make a huge difference. Yeah. So my question is. Um, if, so, not, so it's great that only $38 a month can provide food, water, education, clothing, biblical training, discipleship. But when a person's apparent needs are so basic to survival, why is it important for the child, the family, and the community to even bother to know God through Compassions International made possible by someone's financial support? Like to know God seems so... Like it should be way down the list given the needs of survival. Sure. And there's a lot of great organizations that meet the needs of the poor. Yeah. Compassion is the only charitable organization that, that um, is child-centered okay. and is based in with the local church, church-based. And um, um, <coughs> the reason for that is intentional because if we can catch a child... Um, in their formative years, they keep from having to have all of this, of the, Im the full impact of poverty. And mm -hmm. so we're, you know, obviously you're saving a life as early as possible. And because they're coming to a compassion center for tutoring and for health care and for safety, a, a safe place to play where they're not out in the streets and they're not going home where it's not safe, they're coming to a compassion center, then the people at the compassion center are believers. Mm -hmm. And so they're introducing Christ. And so this child grows up with this full um, uh, picture of this is what love looks like. It looks like giving. It looks yeah. like God. They don't have any concept of that. And um, it's interesting. We don't really have a full understanding of what poverty looks like in the United States. We mm -hmm. think of it as a poor person. I, you know, I give them money on the street corner or I donate, um, you know, to the wish foundations or I'm going through the grocery store and I buy something and and that's charity that's not the same thing as as meeting poverty mm -hmm. so compassion um, and you can go on the website and they have you will just not be able to run out of sources on there but they show poverty in a wheel and so they explain that poverty is is like a wheel that has many many spokes and every spoke is critical to a person being able to break out of poverty. Mm -hmm. And so there's the education piece, there's economics, there's um, health care, uh, there's water, there's food, um, all of these things. There's so many, so many um, uh, levels to poverty that it's not as simple as oh, we build a well or we, we, we give them malaria tents or we throw some money at something. Yeah. It, they have to deal with all the issues together and the fact that they're dealing with it individually with a person mm -hmm. every child is a person that's what really makes the difference so they're experiencing love which ultimately comes from God right they're hearing about God and they're also being lifted out of poverty they're given a hope and a chance to change yeah and just throwing money in a problem and we see this in our country all the time Right? We've got all kinds of welfare problems that don't solve the problem right. because it's a program. It's not an individual loving another individual, which that's how Jesus did it. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he, um, he didn't wave his hand over a, a crowd of a thousand and heal them all. He individually went to each person and touched them and talked to them, and that there's a human connection that's really important. Yeah. Um, and but I can I can get the sense that surely there's some viewers of of this video live or on demand later that may be thinking, okay, individuals it helps out an individual, but we have a lot of individuals here in the United States, even here right in Richmond, that are in poverty sure. that perhaps not don't know God. So why does it matter that we help someone so far away to know God? Well, I mean, in uh, the New Testament in Acts. Um, and even in Matthew, when Jesus left, he tells people to go into all the world. And, yeah. and actually he's telling them, go into your own backyard and in your own county, in your own city, and in your own country, and then to the farthest regions of the world. So mm -hmm. um, God's goal is that we help everyone mm -hmm. and evangelize everyone. And I think God calls people to different areas. But I don't think we should overlook anything. Yeah. 
there are I think there are different roadblocks that people have to helping certain kinds of people. So some might have roadblocks to helping people in our own culture because of marginalization or stereotypes or prejudices or whatever. Yeah. And that's certainly something that we should work on and address. And another person might have that same barrier to somebody far away. I just, I feel like, I don't know how we can follow God and not be a part of all of it. Mm -hmm. So perhaps this opportunity to sponsor a child, a family community through compassion allows us to uh, help uh, them to know God in a way that we may be inhibited to or may not be as available to us here locally, and would you say, potentially? Yeah, it well, just gives us a different avenue? Yeah, I mean, we can't go everywhere. Right. And the great thing about an organization like Compassion that has integrity and has a track record of being successful um, is why wouldn't I partner with somebody that has figured out all the logistics and all the science of what works? Yeah. How do we give to people and they actually change? They don't just... They're not just consuming, and then nothing ever changes. Yeah, you know, which so many social programs are poorly run, and they're not effective. Um, does that mean we stop giving? No. Let's just find a better way to give. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, it's it's not the only way to help people in another country, but it's certainly a great way to help people. Right, especially because of the uh, the ripple effect of the support. So viewers have certainly heard me mention another time, uh, m m multiple times so far during this, is that. Um, you're sponsoring a child, but you're also helping a family and a community. So that leads to our next question of how does compassion do that? Like, how do they have such an impact? It's not just sponsoring a child. Um, you're sponsoring much more than that. What are they doing? Sure. So if, a, if you've got a poor family, and we met many poor families um, with kids who are sponsored and kids who are, they want their kids to be sponsored. If, if you have one child sponsored, that's one child who's going to go to school who's going to who's going to eat healthy who i mean that food's coming in your home it, everyone's going to share it yeah. you know yeah. um i mean we've met a family that their whole family lives on their one compassion child's um um help because yeah. that's they can't work they don't have anything else but like one of the children that we sponsor his brother is also sponsored okay so then you're getting um both of these children have a chance to go to school and and in poor countries too um, not only do kids not go to school because their parents aren't educated, they don't go to school because the schools are hours away. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have the money for supplies. Um, they need the children to scavenge for food during the day. And in a lot of cases, the parents are unable to work or or do anything for themselves, so the children are actually taking care of the families. Okay. So they can't go to school. Um, also, children who have uniforms which cost money school uniforms those children are um, statistically much greater advantaged against being sexually assaulted against being robbed um, there are plenty of poor kids to prey on and so predators prey on kids who aren't who don't have resources and a child in a uniform looks like he has resources oh, okay. so yeah. there's a, there's a lot of reasons that parents want their kids to be educated yeah it's to protect them for now and you know certainly they want them to be able to break out of poverty and you can't do that without an education but um, hmm. okay anyway so it, it benefits the whole family yeah. uh, n another thing real quick yeah we were in one um, uh, with a family a woman had five children and Americans think if you have five children and you can't feed one of them. Why are you having, like, why are you having children? Why are you having five kids? Yeah. Why not stop with one kid? And one woman explained uh, when somebody asked the question about this must be really stressful to have this many mouths to feed. She said, "Well, I'm, I'm, I have five children because I'm hoping that one will survive." Mm -hmm. And wow. that's we we just don't think that no. way. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the additional piece is that the children take care of the adults. Mm -hmm. And they all have disease and they all have infirmities because they don't have health care. So the longevity is of working years is very short. They're going to be crippled. They're going to get AIDS. They're going to, you know, they're going to have some type of illness that prevents them from working. Mm -hmm. And they need children who can find the food. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, because it's not just hopping in the car and going down to the local grocery store. No, no. They're, where they're, they're, they're walking all day to yeah. find um, garbage to eat for dinner. Yeah. So if, if one child is being airlifted out of that environment, it helps the whole family. Yeah. So their circumstances are just so different from what we're used to and what we can wrap our minds around. And so right. you touched on earlier the fact that compassion works through the local church. 
Right. And I assume the benefit of that is that church knows that community and knows really mm -hmm. the Kids and they know their parents and when we went, um, I was so impressed. And, and Compassion will send letters too. Like I'll, I just got a bunch of letters from the pastors of the children that I sponsor, okay. saying, you know, I'd like to give you an update on how this child is doing. Um, the the other another hands-on benefit is the um, Compassion Centers has licensed social workers okay. that go out to the children's homes and check on the family situation hmm. so they're keeping up with the kids they're making sure that they're not coming in with bruises mm -hmm. you know that they look like they're getting healthier like they're eating their their you know their spirit is positive they're they're making sure that there's not stuff going on in that home yeah. um, that's going to be detrimental to the child and if he's not in a compassion program there's nobody showing up at his house to check on him yeah. nobody cares yeah that's really awesome. I mean, we talked earlier how $38 a month is not a whole lot of money when it's a, a nickel per hour <laughs> during right. the day, but right. it's certainly nice to know that they go to such extent to make sure that those resources are really having the benefit that's intended. That's really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, another benefit uh, is how this has all impacted your family. And so I'm going to ask a two-part question because your answer to both of these may be interrelated. Okay. So the question A is, how and why is sponsoring multiple children strengthen your family? And then also, along those lines, how can child sponsors, so perhaps those that sponsored this Sunday or may sponsor after this video, um, how can they better find family through their sponsorship beyond just paying each month? So, and I'm, I'm certain that's probably related to how your family's been impacted. Well, the letter writing is a big deal. Okay. Um, and letters are, somebody asked me this question Sunday. Do they read English? No. <laughs> the compassion, there are mail centers for every compassion center. Okay. And there are translators. So you will write a letter, you'll get a form, and it'll be like divided down the center. So there'll be a spot for your letter, and then there'll be a spot that says, don't write here, this is for the translator. Mm -hmm. And somebody in the Compassion Center will translate it and then give it to the child and then they will write you back the same way. So you'll see their actual handwriting. So mm. I'm seeing Arabic and I'm seeing Spanish and I'm seeing French from my from my girl in Africa. Yeah. And then I'm seeing the the English translation okay. um, with it. And the the letter writing is where you can ask questions about what you get information about their families. But you can ask questions, you can tell them how you're doing. Uh, the best thing you can do is support them and say, I love you, I'm praying for you, um, God's going to do great things for you, um, I'm seeing so much growth in you, just positive, mm -hmm. encouraging comments because people in poverty don't hear that from anyone. Mm -hmm. um, can you share photos? Are you allowed yes, to share photos? Yes, so okay. you, you're actually allowed to send anything that fits into an envelope. Okay. Um, for like Christmas and birthdays, you'll get a form letter that says, um, well, it's like a special card that if you would like to give a gift mm -hmm. for a birthday, you know, you can add that. So I don't send gifts. I just send money and mm -hmm. then Compassion buys them what they need because I don't know what they need, yeah. you know. And so for Christmas, what they do is to make sure no Compassion children get left out at Christmas. All the Christmas money for a center goes in a pot and they buy everybody oh, gifts that's nice. because you don't want one child sitting yeah. there without a gift because oh. their sponsor forgot. <laughs> oh, no um, kidding. So, you know, and there's pictures of everybody holding a soccer ball or everybody holding a stuffed animal or something like that. Yeah. And so, um, and wow, that I really thought that through. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't diminish the gift to them that sure. they're all getting the same thing. They're, they are thrilled, um, as thrilled as they can be. So, so there's interaction. We send family pictures uh, when we visit it. That's another thing is visits. So mm -hmm. you can take a trip mm -hmm. to visit your child. Or if you happen to be on your own trip, you can contact Compassion pr prior, and they will have a person, if you want to meet your child, like, hey, we happen to be vacationing in Ethiopia, <laughs> which <laughs> most people would not do. Um, but if but, by chance. Yeah. Yes. Um, could, you, could we set something up to try to meet our child? And yeah. so they will, they will do that for you. And you're never alone with it. Like, they protect the kids. Yeah. So nobody's ever alone with a compassion kid. There's always, um, there's a translator. There's um, either the director or some other person who's going to translate mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. um, Which is great because then you get to meet them as well. Yeah. You get to meet the people that are supporting this child right. on your behalf from right. afar as too. Right. Yeah. And either they're coming to you or you're going to them. Usually they're meeting in a neutral place. Um, they found that it's upsetting and can be risky to bring 
Americans to bring sponsors into a village mm -hmm. or into a home situation. So usually they'll meet they'll meet at a hotel or they'll meet some neutral location. Okay. Um, and sometimes you can take your child shopping or you can you know you can do fun things. Or we spent like a whole day with ours, which was really unusual. Yeah. Uh, but it was great. That that is really awesome. Yeah. Um, and there was some cover. There was some footage from that mm -hmm. too in mm -hmm. the. Uh, during the sermon this past week, and I think it was in the footage that we posted online. So oh, if you want to see that again, watch this past week's sermon uh, for that, but also to hear from Kennedy, uh -huh. our guest speaker, which was, again, really, really awesome. Um, Sue, do you feel that sponsoring a child helps us to find and fulfill our purpose that God has for our lives? Yeah, well, for sure. So it's very <clears throat> easy for us to overlook the social aspect mm -hmm. of the gospel um and when i mean the verse i have a whole pack of verses that i i mean just probably a hundred i don't know of of jesus saying and god saying um meet the needs of the poor look out for the poor look out for the oppressed um, um stand up for the widows stand mm -hmm. up for the orphans in in a court of law jesus said i came to heal the brokenhearted to you know to feed the hungry to minister to the poor i mean there's there's no way you can read scripture from Old or New Testament and not see compassion for people's physical needs as well as a desire to meet spiritual needs. They're mm. always hand in hand. And I mean, it's interesting when you look through the Gospels, Jesus is healing people and feeding them and providing, um, you know, raising people from the dead. And he's doing all of these things. And then there's a separate thing that he does when he says your faith has healed you or he makes some appeal like a lot of times people are healed and there's no evidence that they've believed in him at all mm -hmm. um, sometimes they're tied together sometimes they're not it's Jesus came to alleviate suffering suffering is an aspect of our sinful culture it's yeah. not what he desires for us and it it's true for him as well as it's true for any any social organization I'll talk to people can't hear they they often can't hear spiritual words until their until their physical needs are being met because mm -hmm. when you're when you live in this kind of trauma trauma is all you know it's all they're fighting to survive day by day you can't just pop in and be like you're going to go to hell like they're living in hell they <laughs> they they have no concept of a whole other spirit yeah. world it's they're just trying to survive and so you take uh, you alleviate the suffering and it's love, right? And yep. so then they, it opens up the heart to experience God's love. And the same thing happens for a sponsor. So if I'm participating in the purpose that Christ had for himself, which he also has for me, mm -hmm. and I start walking in that with him, I now am fulfilling the purpose for which God made me, yeah. which is to be his hands and feet. I'm supposed to be Christ. I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to be Christ-like in the world. How can I do that? If I'm not, if I don't care about people's suffering, and if I don't care about their soul, mm -hmm. like everything else we do is really fluff. That's that's yeah. what we're here for. So sponsorship is just another avenue f through which I can do that. I can do that without being a sponsor. Um, it's probably hard to do that for a kid in another country, yeah. but I could certainly do it here, and I could go to another country and do that. But um, I think what sponsorship does, and particularly child sponsorship, is when I'm looking at a face of a child, it makes it personal. So now it's not just a billion people who are starving to death. It's this child whose name is Joe Kelly. This child whose name is Abigail will starve mm -hmm. or will be in forced servitude or will be sexually assaulted or will drop out of school at age eight or will you know this child will drink contaminated water will have malaria will have will get AIDS like all like the list is unending of things that can happen to this child except that I'm saying I care enough about this one child yeah that I'm going to take all of those things off the table it doesn't mean that they're gonna accept Christ yeah. but why wouldn't they mm -hmm. you know it's like Jesus was irresistible in the Bible because he did all of this good for people like who's not drawn to that <laughs> yeah. um, right so so there's definitely a gospel focus with compassion, which other organizations are maybe a little bit more shy about, and I'm not judging, yeah. but because I think um, if we're living out the gospel, it's, it's so compelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, and I, I think it was awesome to hear from Kennedy Sunday mm -hmm. how um, Compassion saved his life, mm -hmm. how the sponsor through Compassion saved his life mm -hmm. and helped him find his purpose, mm -hmm. uh, both there in his hometown mm -hmm. and then here um, abroad here in the United mm -hmm. States. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Sue, uh, and before I go on to our last set of questions, I want to remind our viewers that we do have, you have the opportunity to ask Sue any question <laughs> that you have in regards to everything that we've been talking about. And so whether you're thinking about it now while we're live or whether you're watching this on demand another time, please use the comments area and go ahead and ask your question. So Sue, Compassion International, you've made mention that there's a number of different organizations that are certainly doing things to help improve lives around the world. Sure. Uh, but Compassion International especially seems to be one of the most efficiently run nonprofits that I've ever come across. I think it's what, 82%, 83% of every dollar uh, goes towards towards the kids, towards the family, the community. Right. Um, what, how, in what other ways can you give the viewers, perhaps, that are sitting on the, on the edge going, ah, I'm kind of interested, but I'm not sure I want to do this, the confidence that Compassion International is spending sponsor funds in the ways that truly make a difference? Okay. Um, yeah, you can go on the website. They don't hide anything about where they spend their money. There's okay. pie charts. There's actual numbers. Um, 82% is super high. You might mm -hmm. not think that's high, but if you looked up any organization that you could give money to, and I'm tempted to name <laughs> some names, um, of just even within our own country, for cancer research, for heart and lung, for any poverty type of thing, you, and you find the statistics, I mean, some of them are in the 50 or less percentile yeah. of what actually goes towards that research or towards people. Um, Compassion, 80 over 80 percent is going actually to children so some it's interesting there's a national or an international ranking organization of nonprofits mm -hmm. and um, compassion's always been very high and they decided for the sense of business to change the specifications for how they rank companies okay. and so they they added a factor in which was ranking how much money you have in reserve so compassion went down to like a middle ranking and it's because they don't save the money. Hmm. It goes immediately out to the children. And so if I'm contributing, I don't really want my nonprofit to have billions of dollars in the bank. <laughs> yeah. Because that's how many billions of children that could be saved. Right. So I, I love it. Send it out. You yeah. Know? yeah. So it, they, they, they're very cost effective. Yeah. Do you by chance have any um, stats as to what difference compassion makes in the lives of sure. children? Uh, I know I'm putting you on the spot with that, but I don't know if you had brought any of that with you. Oh, I do. Uh, um, how many of them perhaps like graduate from school, get jobs, yes. anything to that effect? Yes. So um, right now, I think mm -hmm. there's 1.8 million children that are being saved um, through child sponsorship. Um, on nice. average, a sponsored a child sponsored in Compassion will spend 4,000 hours in a safe, nurturing environment. Okay. Think about the amount of trauma that can happen during 4,000 hours of a childhood. Yeah, that's a lot of a lot. Uh, that's a lot of time. They are 50 percent more likely to graduate from college. Nice. They are 14 to 18 percent more likely to have a salaried employment, so not be a day laborer. Yeah. Which most people in most of these countries are. Um, they're um, uh, we uh, compassion does more than just child sponsorship too. We were in a mother baby program so they they noticed that in a lot of these areas the children were not surviving t to be old enough to be sponsored mm -hmm. and so they began a maternity program where um, you can sponsor and donate money towards uh, a mother who's pregnant and they teach her all about how to take care of herself because all these women are <laughs> are not healthy yeah. and they don't have access to healthy food and water so they're so they're helping her in her pregnancy to stay healthy, and then they help her with the infant. And so they're, they're, it's a program to take this baby, one, to survive, because one in five babies die um, being born in the world. I think it's one in five. Wow. Um, infant mortality. And as Kennedy mentioned, in, in poor countries, girls are having, they're, they're being impregnated at age 11 and 12 Gosh. in a lot of these countries. So you have yeah. children having children you have children having grandchildren, essentially, and they not only don't know how to take care and don't have the resources to take care of babies, but they're emotionally not equipped to take care of babies. Mm -hmm. A 13-year-old is not a mother. Right. Um, right. Most 26-year-olds aren't, you know, <laughs> yeah. are not necessarily mothers, let alone grandmothers. But yeah. um, 
And so there, there's a lot of programs that are in place to, to change the statistics. And I don't have that one off the top of my head, but it, it was an enormous change in the amount of children who were surviving once a program like this would come into play in a neighborhood. That was really smart of them to do. Yeah. For, for sure. Yeah. Um, how does, how have you learned from your involvement with Compassion International and sponsoring a handful of kids now? Um, how does making a difference in the life of one kid end up having a ripple effect into the future and outside of their own home area that you know of? Well, um, Compassion, their website is full of stories of people um, talking about what poverty looks like in their mm -hmm. own words, not just, you know, white Americans talking about poverty, but actual people who have grown up in poverty talking about how it's, it's taking, it's not just being poor, it's having, it's no hope, it's feeling like a prisoner that you can never break out of this situation. It's feeling ashamed of something that you did nothing to create. So um, there, there's a lot of testimonials, and then there are also stories of people and who have come through this program. So um, our uh, compassion director was telling us, right now in Haiti and Dominican Republic, right on our doorstep, two of the most impoverished areas, Haiti is, is one of the worst areas in the world, mm -hmm. one of the worst countries in the world in terms of poverty. Um, there are, a, there's a compassion graduate in each one of those countries who is in government and there's a good chance that they'll make a run for president. So if you wow. think about what could happen, I get chills every time I think about it, to these two countries, if you actually had a president who had risen out of poverty, yeah. who knows the Lord, and who wants to change his country, I mean, there, no. there's no... <laughs> that's that's a ripple effect right you there. Have, we have yeah. no idea what changing one life will do because yeah. it changes their family and that changes their family and that changes their family. That's why poverty is so difficult because it's generations of poverty of people not being able to break out of it. And so it's abuse upon abuse. You know, it, and so you're reversing a tide, mm -hmm. a tidal wave really, of the way that families interact and survive. We, we work, this isn't a compassion thing, but we work with, um, uh, in Costa Rica with a girls program um, and it's, it's for girls are at risk. So in, in Costa Rica and in, in these poor areas, every, nearly every girl is sexually molested by family members while she's growing up. And then she becomes a mother and, she, and it, it's just a part of culture. She doesn't want it to happen to her daughters, but she knows it will. Mm -hmm. and, and it's generations of this happening. And so we've been able to be a part of a program uh, to take these girls out of school at, at, well actually they only go to school half the day so after school fifth and sixth graders and teach them about um, self-image and about sexuality and about confidence and about friendships and about you know all of these things and since these girls have been in the program 90 percent of these girls are continuing in school they're not getting pregnant they're not being sexually abused and it, that's just within seven years mm -hmm. it's already changed so it's that type of thing yeah you change one life you change a whole family wow that's uh, absolutely amazing um, anything that you can think of um, from the kids that you sponsored where you've seen uh, a difference occur in their lives the stories the letters they've written you or anything to that effect like you've had one graduate mm -hmm. out of the program mm -hmm. uh, what, what is he looking to do next so he's, forth? he's training to be a mechanic okay awesome and, um, so there's gonna be a huge difference in his life right yeah, there so he has yes he had it was great too because when we visited him he has um, a girlfriend mm -hmm. and so we sat down because Shane and I do marriage counseling and we sat down with a piece of paper and did mini marriage counseling for him <laughs> just because we're not sure that he's ever going to get good marriage advice. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so we just said, this is, this is what this should look like, and this is what you need to be working That's on. That's great. Um, we have another boy who's sponsored who's like you. He's like um, building apps and, and um, doing website well, development. Techno techie, yeah. huh? He has techie. a cell phone. Yeah. And um, like if he, if he weren't sponsored, where would he get the money? And the schooling to do that right you know so there's so many gifted kids but they don't even a lot of them don't even know they have gifts because mm -hmm. they're looking for food yeah yeah wow um sue i can imagine still people have watched all this video and they're like right there thinking <laughs> perhaps i'll sponsor <laughs> a child but i feel I'm, i just feel so overwhelmed like you said there's 1.8 million kids sponsored 
but there's there's Certainly, millions yeah. more. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's easy to feel overwhelmed. What would you say to somebody who might be saying, what differences am I really making? The problem's just so big, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, and so they're just inclined not to, not to sponsor. Well, I would, I would go on the website and read some stories. Okay, because, there you go. Um, See you for know, yourself what's if, happening. If I'm that child who's not being sponsored yeah. and somebody in another country is thinking like, what good's it gonna do um, with this one person? It's my life, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, um, there's people who want to be artists and writers and doctors and lawyers and teachers and um, electricians and engineers and, and they they have no option to do that. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, read any biography of a famous person and you see a person that was a regular kid that had opportunity and um, and did something with it. I, I think from a sponsor's point of view, I mean, that's the benefit to the children, the benefit to the sponsor, if we want to look at it from maybe a more American way of looking at things, yeah. how does this help me? Yeah. Um, it makes me change. It makes hmm. me it makes me grow as a person. And it's the same reason we send kids on study abroad trips, you know, and try to get them in better schools and in, in IB programs and tutors and, mm -hmm. you know, sports lessons and or sport you know sporting events to put them on teams we put them in acting classes dancing classes music lessons we go to every you know because we're trying to let help our children explore what it is they might want to do and then when there's gifting there we want to put every resource we have right. behind it right well this is just a this is just a little bit of a window to do that for somebody else and in doing that it actually exposes me to a whole other way to look at life because I mean how can I complain and we've used this you know like the starving children in Africa mm -hmm. illustration when your kids don't want to eat their green beans <laughs> right you're like well it, it would really be great if Hannah could have this meal tonight yeah. and they know him because their allowance is going towards this child in Ethiopia who only lives on rice or popcorn you know so it's it's a it's a regular reminder of how blessed we are not in a guilty way but mm -hmm. in a in a resource way, like oh, I've been given oh, yeah, so much, yeah. this is wrong for me to yeah. hold on to all the resources that I have yeah. when other people need them. That's why I've been given them. Nice. And, you know, that's in the Bible too, so. Very good. <laughs> well, thank you, Sue. So we want to challenge all of our viewers right now to, uh, to as you've heard everything that Sue has had to share uh, during this, this video, which is great. Thank you so much for allowing us thank to you. delve deep into perhaps some things that were not said on Sunday simply because we didn't have the time to get into th this depth of material. Um, if you've been uh, sitting on the fence thinking about sponsoring a child, you've just heard all these reasons why. I challenge every viewer right now that's watching this video, go ahead and sponsor a child. Um, like I said, it's only five cents an hour, basically, <laughs> is what it breaks down into. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of times we can be guilted into it, like, oh, give up your Starbucks coffee or so forth. Nobody wants to give up your Starbucks coffee. But, you know what, Co call the Comcast person and say, what, well, I, I need to reduce my, my bill by $38 a month so I can take care of someone else. I don't know what. There's certainly got to be ways. Magazine subscriptions you no longer need, whatever you can Yeah, I mean, if we want to do happen. something, you can find $38. Yeah, yeah. Um, five cents an hour. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> that's all it comes to. So Compassion.com is the website. Again, Compassion.com. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and do that. They'll show you a bunch of kids. You can find kids all sorts of different ways, uh, um, different countries and yeah. so forth. And yet, then come back and put in the comments, you sponsored a child. So oh, yeah. you can even put your child's name and their picture in there if you want. We would all love to celebrate along with you and welcome them to their new future. So speaking of the future, um, we are next Sunday finishes moved. It's the the last uh, week of moved. It's uh, week number five. It's going to be another special Sunday uh, as well. Um, and but we will not have it alive next week. Uh, I'm out of town. I'm speaking at a church conference oh, actually hey. next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll be really cool. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, and uh, so we will not have a live next week, but we are going to bring you that live at some point in the future with a special guest as well. So we'll look forward to that. We'll announce the date and time when we've got that arranged. So, thank well, you. thank you so much, thank Sue. You. Appreciate it. This was great. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in, folks. Be sure, again, sponsor your child, comment with additional questions and the name of your child, and share this video out to other people who should sponsor your child as well. Have a blessed day. Thanks. All right. Great. Thank, thank, thank you. you so much.